Good evening, lovelies. Tonight I am going to be making the first sort of installment in a series that I'm doing of the Greek gods and goddesses. I have a bunch of different ideas that I want to do for each one, um, but the there's a lot of famous ones, but my, my personal favorite one is Persephone. And so I thought I would do a little video on just me starting the whole process or um, you jumping into me in the middle of me starting the whole process. So what I did was I took a bunch of sheets of clay and I ran them through my pasta maker and I made it so they flatten out inside the frame. I glued the frame in place so that way I used E6000 and then I used hot glue to hold it in place while the E6000 set. Um, and then I didn't really know what I was going to do with the texture, but I think leaving a little of these like nubs in the background is actually pretty cool and then flattening some of it and then having a little depth here and there. But the Greeks are known for their vanity, so they typically like everything pristine and smooth and with an air of grace. So, but right now I'm working on the tree for what I would like to have for Persephone. She's going to be here. And then there's going to be a mount, uh, mountain also in the background. Um, and with said mountain and tree, I'm going to make it so that everything up here is light and fun and green. And then as you get down lower, you're going to transition into the underworld. So it's going to start to decay and get darker. Um, as you can see, I have started the tree roots right here. And it's basically just gonna be some tedious work, getting the tree right, setting up the mountains, that kind of stuff. Um, this is gonna be a partially happy little tree, as Bob Ross would say. And we're just gonna get working on that. I gotta pull up my reference photo for my tree. So, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I don't have any uncopyright music right now, so um, I'll try and throw little interesting tidbits here and there about that. I was explaining to somebody today who Persephone was because they didn't know. And I was like, oh, please let me tell you, this is one of my favorite things. I love history and I love Greek and Roman mythology and all that kind of stuff. Honestly, if I could, I'd be a history teacher, but I really love doing art too, so I kind of want to be an art teacher. Hope everybody's evening is going well. Currently still in quarantine some of it self-imposed some of it is not I work as an essential employee so I oh here we go yeah, that's what I want um so I'm like half quarantine half not it's fun it's fun times trying not to lose what's left of your sanity. But I can't seem to find my reference photo, so I might have to just go off of um, what I'm picturing inside my mind. Mm, there's so many good ones. So, and like I said, I just took, and uh, so I'm just gonna take 
bits of clay and I'm going to make smaller trees coming off or smaller branches coming off of it and then I'll have to figure out what I want to do with the um, leaves. I am not proficient at making leaves yet so this is going to be my first try at doing that. Um, I might just take a bunch of clay, stick it on there and then like just put some texture into it and call it, call it leaves. Um, but who knows? But I want this to have some good texture and good details on it. And I love, I love working with clay. Just for me, working with the 3D is much easier than drawing. But I commend anybody who can draw because drawing is so hard. For me at least. There are some people who are just like, oh no, drawing's really easy and they can do it and that's wonderful. I love anybody who can do multi-mediums because I wish I could. I can sort of draw, but it's mostly if I'm copying somebody else's work. Whereas with my clay work, I can come up with most of my ideas and put them onto clay. But I love I love just doing this. It's so much fun. Now with the tree, it's gonna be a little bit difficult because I'm trying to do the roots now one of the great things I like about clay is you can smooth it, texture it texture it and all that lovely stuff. Sorry if I like trail off in the middle of a sentence. I get so into what I'm doing sometimes that I forget that I'm actually talking. And this is, um, oh my god, Bacon Bond. Bacon Bond is a liquid clay. I love it. Um, you can add it onto pieces like this. So that way when it's baking in the oven, as it should, um, I should have gotten the transparent, I got the white, I believe. Bacon Bond Bakeable Adhesive Oven Clay. So it doesn't actually say that it's white, but I should have gotten a more transparent one because when this does bake in the oven it has a tendency to show up a bit and so like that right there I'm gonna have to go in and make sure that I paint all around that that either that brown color or do something different with the frame um but I don't think I'll need to do that for right now and then as soon as I'm done doing the roots I'm going to texture the tree and I love texturing. Texturing is one of it's very therapeutic for me because it's just like very relaxing you can just get into it and not really have to think about what you're doing. Now right now I'm just blending everything. Now with these are the tools I got off of Amazon, I believe. All my tools I either bought at my local store or I got off of Amazon. Mostly most of my um art pieces have been coming from Amazon or my art um tools have been coming from Amazon just because I am hella lazy. Um, but I personally like going to the store and picking out my art pieces, or, I'm sorry again, uh, picking out my sculpting tools, 
um, and then I can hand, I can sort of handle them. I can look at them and see what type they are. Um, because quite honestly, I probably wouldn't have picked this uh, wax sculpting set because it only has a teardrop smoother, um, and it's I think it's supposed to be called a spoon tool, but I call it a smoother because that's what I use it for, and. I have to, I'm going to eventually have to take my Dremel to it and Dremel this down so it's a little bit rounder so that way it doesn't leave so many divots in my clay because that slightly irritates me. So I have to use this piece which is really nice for smoothing things out but I have to be careful that I don't stab myself <laughs> while I'm using it. It's, it's a fun, it's a fun adventure on will I stab myself today while I'm doing my art. 95% of the time that is a yes I will. Hence why I have cuts all over my hands. Now when it comes to these more in the way areas like right here I'll use my ball stylist and sort of smooth that out as best as I possibly can. This ball stylus, it took me forever to find because every time I either went to the store, I couldn't find it, and then I would look on Amazon and they were like, you want this? And it was not what I wanted. Like, they just could not understand when I said ball stylus. So, I waited and then I finally, finally found these and these are my favorite things because not only do they have the ball stylus at this end, and it, this is your small, medium, and large, but they also have the rubber tools at this end. And, and in a perfect world, this would be all that you need. But I personally like using several different sizes for, cause like this is a very, very finite ball. And I need something that's just a little bit bigger than that for when I do like my 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 clay moss or whatever. And that's not what I wanted. And we're just getting the trunk or not the trunk, the roots in the way that we want them to be. Now, I, this is from a whole piece of clay, so which is why I'm like going through and fixing certain pieces because I probably should have done this when it wasn't on the canvas and that way I'm not like screwing up my canvas, but hey, you learn as you go. Like, I'm not proficient in clay, I don't claim to be. I am learning new things every day, and I love watching other YouTubers and learning from them new and interesting ways on how I can texture clay or how I can, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of a vine there, or a little bit of a root there. Um, on how I can do something differently and you know what works best for them might work for me and and that sort of thing and I just I love anybody who can work with clay or watercolors or acrylics or gouache and like my favorite thing is watching people mix mediums like epoxy and regular clay and god bless or uh yeah god's bless anybody who can work with friggin air dry clay because that stuff just gets on my nerves like i cannot for the life of me figure out how to use air dry clay like i don't i'm <laughs> most of my pieces take a good while for me to get done so I can't have anything that's that time sensitive and like I'm fairly certain when I first started using clay I used air dry clay and that's when I transitioned over to polymer clay um, because 
I remember the care that it took in you have to spray your clay and then cover it with a plastic bag and you keep spraying it if you're not going to come back to it for a long time and I was just like you know what this is not my thing but I appreciate anybody who can do it and because I see some works and I'm just like oh that there's no way that, that could have been done with, with polymer clay and I, I love all form and works of art rather it be watercolors or photography or marble dude I saw on I think it was my Facebook today how they were showing how much detail some of these um, sculptors put into their um, marble work it was fantastic I loved it just seeing like all the little like the pull of the cloth and how someone was holding somebody else and you could see like the indents of where his fingers were going into her skin and it was just it was gorgeous and that's the kind of thing I aspire to be able to do It's just amazing, and I love art, and I'm probably rambling, and that's fine. I would have posted a video last week, but my lights were giving me problems, and I am not proficient enough in my video editing skills, meaning I have none. I have no video editing skills. Um, to fix whatever the heck was going on with him at the time. So, we were just going to be like, alright, well, we cannot post this video. It will give people a seizure. Because I, uh, I, I, afterwards, I learned what I had done wrong. And basically it was light diffusion and I was like, oh, well, we're just going to have to learn how to work around that without having to purchase anything else right now. And I think that I'm going to have Persephone stand right here. And then I don't know what I want to go. I don't know what I want to go over here. Maybe I'll have her stand just off to the side because then you can have all the tree and or leaves and branches and stuff come down here and then have the, the mountains in the background behind her and then she's gonna have um the grapefruit in one hand with the seeds coming out of it and then represent her holding or growing a, a sapling out of her hands to show her transition to the underworld Excuse me. Apparently, I am tired. And I probably won't get this done all in one video, because let's be honest, this is going to take a bit. And I'll post other videos in between doing this video, and I'll try and make a playlist for this video, because, um,. Uh, it would be much easier to just have a playlist of this one so that way I can just add on to it and make like the Greek god and goddesses a playlist Norse god and goddesses um, a playlist and it's just easily condensed for everybody's viewing pleasure And I think I should fill that in right there. Because it just seems like it's just a little too open right there. Um, but I'm sorry if I'm mostly rambling in this video. I did not prepare anything for tonight. I was just like, you know what? I want to record and be rambly. And if I throw out some good information, hey, I do that. But, you know, sometimes it doesn't always work out. 
now I'm just riffing. But so what a cool thing you can do is let's fill in this little section first. Um, my favorite tool to use for making um, textures on a tree is my, I forgot what it's called. I think it's your point, your, it's a, it's a form of a dental tool. So it's kind of interesting. So I have no idea what it is. Um, but you take, where is it? Maybe I lost it. Ah, here it is. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. So these things are a form of a dental tool. I don't know what they are, but they're pretty cool and they're pointy and jabby. And I probably poked myself with these like five times already. Um, but with these, just make lines. And it's so simple, but it's so cool all at the same time. You just make bark marks. And it's so relaxing to do. And I love doing it. This is what I used to do when I would make them. Um, this is actually how I learned how to make um, grains and wood and whatnot. Um, I used to do fairy houses and I sometimes still do them when I, the mood hits me right because I feel like when I evolve out of or I level up out of something I'm just like mm, I don't know if I'm going to go back to that but then there are times where I'm like I really want to go back to that and I'm probably going to end up doing it eventually and uh, when I would make doors on my fairy houses this is what I would do to the doors because they would all be wooden and you know it's not all who wander are lost type of looking deal And they're fantastic. Little lines, happy little lines, happy little trees. But what really makes it, for me at least, is when I go over it and paint it. Because painting is one of my favorites. Like, you give me something to paint and I will try and rock it as best as I can. You know, there's always room for error, and nothing's ever perfect, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be the way you like it. Whatever makes you happy. The one thing I haven't perfected yet and I want to try and do is like a little notch in the tree, where you know how sometimes you see the little swirlies and whatnot. Just like, I want to try but I have to look at a photo reference for it because I want to be able to make sure that I can see how the swirly is going. Because I know each swirly is different. And so like even though it's clay on clay, I can't press down on it because I don't want to lose its shape or its texture. So I put that underneath, and since the whole thing's going to end up getting painted anyway, um, it's going to look pretty awesome, hopefully. There are sometimes with some pieces where I think I'm done with them, and then I put them up and I let them sit for a minute, and then I'm like, I don't like how that looks, and I go back in and I fiddle with it. And sometimes it turns out the way I want it to, and then sometimes I'm just like, oh, I should have left it the way it was. But the one piece I did, I loved. It was a dragon's eye piece, and there were scales all around the dragon's eye. And I, at first I just done it where it was like the texture on the back of the, the uh, clay. And I let it, I baked it, and I let it sit, and I was like, I don't like it. It's 
it's it's just not something that I'm enjoying. So I went back and I made the scales that I would make for my dragon eggs and I could probably do a time lapse video with that because that's actually fairly easy to do. I could actually do just a full video of that because it's actually really easy to do. Um, and I was like maybe I'll try it this way and you just I love trying new things like a uh, thing I know before and trying it with something else and it just it ends up looking so good sometimes it's a pleasant surprise so then there's the the texture on the tree right there and then I really should fill this in a little bit more my computer just turned off. Yay! Um, typically, when I'm doing my art, I listen to music or I watch Jacksepticeye or Markiplier. But since I was doing a video, I didn't think you guys would want to hear them in the background, and I don't even know if I'm allowed to do that. I'm new to YouTube, so. I don't know what's allowed and what's not allowed because I tried reading through the the uh, rules and I was just, just all blended together. There. And if you ever lose some of your texture, you can always go back in and just choo 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 choo. You want to try to make it go with the way that the clay is going and the way the the trees and the bark is going. Or the tree. There's only one tree here. Although I might make. It's my cat. I might make, make happy little trees. 